Our next speaker is Nikolai Rambo in archaeology, speaking on navigating the ethical maelstrom, morality and archaeological ethics in a globalized world. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Um, as you can see by my perhaps overly dramatic title, my presentation is a little more on the theoretical side of archaeology. And as an unfortunate result, there are not any excellent pictures to show you. So apologies in advance to that. Um, but to get started right off the bat, the reason that I say archaeological ethics exist in a little bit of a maelstrom or confusing vortex, if you will, is because the past 20 or so years in particular have seen a surge of critiques coming from within the discipline of archaeology's codified ethics, essentially, saying that they just don't seem to work in a lot of situations. Now, there have been a number of very strong critiques and very helpful and good solutions that have been proposed. And while I do tend to agree with most of them, I also suggest that there may be a further step that could be taken and that many of these critiques also seem to be at least implicitly suggesting. And that is to define the moral goals of archaeology. Now, there's an important distinction here between ethics and morality, and the two terms are very often conflated. Even in philosophy, there's not really an official definition stating that ethics and morality are these two separate things. But for the purpose of my research, they're necessarily defined. Ethics tends to be the codified practices of a discipline, of an organization, or of a company, whereas morality tends to define the broader sense of right and wrong, not necessarily codified. Now, of course, these critiques from archeolo of archaeological ethics are aimed at the former. So where are these critiques coming from? In my research, I've identified three very broad but primary areas where archaeologists who have been looking at the relationship, the historical relationship between archaeology and nationalism, capitalism, and more recently with multiculturalism, as they've been critiquing this relationship, the harms that archaeology might be implicit in, they've also been critiquing ethical codes on these grounds realizing that quite often archaeological ethics are not, they're not culturally sound. They don't fit in with different cultural contexts. They're uh, apolitical, and in many cases, they're impractical for this purpose. An archaeologist might go into a situation following an ethical code and realize that the solution that it prescribes isn't necessarily moral, and that's a very big issue. So what many of these critiques are calling for, despite the fact that there's a huge diversity in this critical theory, is essentially that archaeological ethical codes need to be decodified. Now, I know you're probably thinking that sounds a little bit odd, and it definitely is. After all, ethics need to be grounded in something, and all of these solutions that have been proposed do suggest that. They are asking for archaeological ethics to be grounded in politics, to be political, to be activist, and to aim at addressing the inequalities and potential harms that archaeology in relationship with the aforementioned problems has. And as I mentioned, while I agree with many of these solutions, I think there's a further step and something that many of these seem to be implicitly implying, and that is looking at the moral goals of archaeology. Now, recall the distinction between ethics and morality. So the moral goals, when I'm speaking of that, I'm talking about archaeologists opening up a discussion and a debate looking at what we as a discipline think might be right and wrong, and then applying that, if it can be, to specific cultural contexts and situations when we go into a site and are dealing with local people and thinking, all right, what kind of ethical codes, while discussing with these people, might be applicable here? Now, what I'm not trying to do is say, here is a moral theory, and this is what we should do, because that is a little bit... <laughs> I'm going to hesitate and say neo-colonial, and we'll just end us up basically in the same situation. What I am trying to do is suggest that we open up a conversation, start having these debates, and maybe see if there's any moral approaches that could be had, and conti continue to debate them as we go forward. So what we're looking for, because we want to straddle this divide between the global and the local, is a morality that is universal, but not overbearingly so, not something that's going to say, do this, don't do this, but something that has a gray area and at the very most basic sense is looking at what might be some of the essential moral needs of humanity. And the purpose of this is to be able to craft contextual ethical codes in specific situations that are reflexive, that are critical, that are constantly debated, but also don't get in, end us up in the sticky web of moral relativism where we don't know what to do or might be catering to the same things that we're trying to avoid, be it sexism, racism, what have you. Now, there's a couple moral theories that, unfortunately, I don't have too much time to get into, 
But there's a debate in philosophy going on fairly recently that is doing essentially the very same thing, that it's looking at moral theories and saying some of these are not applicable to the world, essentially. And out of this is born the capabilities approach, which is suggesting essentially morality that is context-based, takes culture into account, but only goes so far. Thank you. Thank you.